How you doing today, boys and girls? We're going to take a look at sections 3, 2, and 3, 3 in today's video. And first, let's get into using parallel lines and transversals. Then after that, we'll look to prove lines are parallel using various postulates, theorems, and their converses. The first one we're going to take a look at is a corresponding angles postulate and the corresponding angles converse. Now notice in both diagrams we've got angles 2 and 6, but there's something slightly different about each diagram. In the corresponding angles postulate, notice the two little triangles that are on lines A and B. If we see that in a diagram, then, then we can assume that those two lines are parallel. Whereas in the diagram for the corresponding angles converse, the only thing we know there is that angles 2 and angle 6, they're both marked as congruent. So we're going to make the following conclusions based on what type of diagram we have or what information we might be given. If line A is parallel to line B, then angle 2 is congruent to angle 6. That's what the corresponding angles postulate says. Now likewise, for the corresponding angles converse, now remember converses from what we did in the last chapter, the inverse converse contrapositive, Converse just switches the hypothesis and conclusion. So in this case, we're going to have if angle 2 is congruent to angle 6, then line A is going to be parallel to line B. Now, one thing to note in the diagram, 2 and 6 are not the only pair of corresponding angles. There are lots of other pairs. Only 2 and 6 are used in this example, but you could replace two, angle 2 and angle 6 with any other pair of corresponding angles, and they would be congruent. Now, we're going to take a look at alternate interior angles theorem and the alternate interior angles converse. And again, the diagram on the left, we notice that two lines are parallel. So if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then alternate interior angles are going to be congruent. This is denoted by saying if A is parallel to B, then angle 4 is congruent to angle 5. Now when we look at the alternate interior angles converse, here we don't know the lines are parallel. We only know that angle 4 and angle 5 are congruent based on the way our diagram is marked. So if two lines are cut by a transversal so that alternate interior angles are congruent, then we conclude that those two lines are parallel. Similar to the last example, 4 and 5 are not the only pair of alternate interior angles. So if you had another pair of alternate interior angles, they would either be congruent or you could use them to prove that two lines are congruent. Now next we're going to take a look at the alternate exterior angles theorem and the alternate exterior angles converse. So I think by now you guys probably have a pattern for the alternate exterior angles theorem. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the alternate in exterior angles are going to be congruent. Whereas for the alternate exterior angles converse, if two lines are cut by a transversal so that alternate exterior angles are congruent, then we conclude that the lines are going to be parallel. So in this case, if angle 1 is congruent to angle 8, then angle or line A is parallel to line B. And again, 1 and 8 aren't the only pair of alternate exterior angles, but they're the only ones that are shown here in our diagram. So for the consecutive interior angles theorem, if line A is parallel to line B, then we know that my consecutive interior angles, which in this case are 3 and 5, they're equal to 180, or supplementary. Now likewise, if we go after the consecutive interior angles converse, if we know that two consecutive interior angles are supplementary, then we can conclude that the lines A and B are parallel. So again, these aren't the only pair of consecutive interior angles, but they're the pair that are used in this diagram. Before we get into solving some of the next problems, I want to just kind of take a look at several different problems here and get you to, see, to think about a bigger diagram and see what kind of pictures you can uh, see and what conclusions you can make. Now let's just say that angle 1 was say 110 degrees. Now angle 4, which is a vertical angle to angle 1, that would be the same 
so that's also 110 degrees. Now, notice that my two lines are parallel and they're cut by transversal that forms all eight of those angles. So that means I can take angle four and go to angle eight and angle eight is going to be the same thing because that is a corresponding angle to angle four. So that's also going to be 110 degrees. Now five and eight are vertical angles so five is going to be 110 degrees also. Now that's just one way to think about those angles one, four, five, and eight. There's lots of different ways you could have actually come up with those. I could have taken a look at angle one being 110 and concluded that angle eight was 110 just because those are alternate exterior angles. And if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then alternate exterior angles are congruent. So you've got some options here as far as how your brain wants to see um, and make the conclusions on this. Now, kind of looking around this area right here, you know, when I take a look at that, I know that angle one's 110, so angle two has got to be 70 degrees because angles one and two are linear pair. Now angle three is also a linear pair with angle one or angle four, or you could look at it and say, well, it's vertical to angle two. Angle three is also 70 degrees. Same thing for angle seven and angle six. So I've got this pattern here where I want you guys to see if you can take a look at. Let's take a look at our next picture over here. Say this angle right here, angle um, two, was 160 degrees. See if you can fill in the rest of that diagram based on just that one measure. If you think you got it, hit pause and then come back and see if you're correct. If you don't have it, let's go ahead and continue on and see what we can come up with. Angle 4 would be 160. Angle 8 would be 160 degrees. Angle 5 would be 160. Angle 6 would be 20. Angle 7 would be 20. Angle 3 would be 20. And angle 2 would also be 20. So that would be the, all of those angles together for that second diagram. Now there's a pattern here that I want you to kind of pay attention to a little bit. and We're going to do a little bit of highlighting here. So in each case, this angle, this angle, this angle, and this angle were all the same. Different color here. So we're going to go green. All of these angles, 2, 3, 7, and 6, they're also going to be equal. Now here's my question. If you have a green and a blue, if you take those two and add them up, what are they always equal? What is their sum always going to be? 180 degrees. So when you take a look at a, a picture like that, some of the students I've had in the past, they like to kind of fill in the colors like that, or what they'll do sometimes is they'll just fill in each one of those angles based on where their location is. So that's a, one relationship that I want you to pay attention to as you work on problems like this throughout geometry. Now when we take a look at finding the value of x, we have to take a look at our diagram. Now notice our diagram, we have two parallel lines and that's denoted by our triangles. The 115 degrees is, and the x plus 5 is, those are alternate exterior angles. And by the alternate exterior angles theorem, I, I know if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then these two angles are going to be equal. So that leads me to write the following equation. I'm going to have 115 equals x plus 5. Subtracting 5 from both sides using the subtraction property of equality, I get 110 for x. That is all I had to do. My directions just asked me to find the value of x. I found it to be 110. Now, Notice though, it's not 110 degrees, it's just 110, because the angle has a total of 115 degrees, so the value of x that makes that happen is just 110. Now for this picture, we're given angle in example two, we're told that angle one is 105, so let's go ahead and write that in our diagram. Angle one is 105. And I've got to find angles four, five, and eight. Well, four is vertical, so that's also gonna be 105. Compared to angle one, 
angles 1 and 5 are corresponding, so that's going to be 105. Angle 1 and angle 8 are alternate exterior angles, so that's going to be 105 also. Now, I could have gone about it thinking a little bit differently, but that's just one way to do that. So there's the solution for that. So if the measure of angle 1 is 105 degrees, then the measure of angle 4 equals measure of angle 5 equals measure of angle 8 equals 105 degrees. For example B, we've got the measure of angle 3 equals 68 degrees, and the measure of angle 8 is 2x plus 4, and we've got to find the value of x. So let's go ahead and mark our diagram here. So angle 3, we're told that that is 68 and the measure of angle 8 all the way over here is 2x plus 4. Now both of those are on the same side in their exterior angles. Now if I take a look and kind of bounce around a little bit, let me go ahead and do this. Angle 3 would be the same thing as angle 6 because those are alternate exterior angles. And notice 6 and 8 are next to each other. They're a linear pair, so that means they're going to be supplementary. So what I want to do is say the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 8, that's going to equal 180. So I'm going to substitute in what I know, 68 plus measure of angle 8, that's just 2x plus 4, gives me 180. If I combine like terms on the left hand side, I'll have 2x plus 72 equals 180. Now using the subtraction property of equality, I'll get 2x equals 108. And then when I divide both sides by 2, I'll get x equals 54. Example 3 says find the value of x that makes m parallel to n. So based on their location where 3x plus 5 is and 65 is, you got to recognize right off the bat that those are corresponding angles. So if you recognize they were corresponding angles, give yourself a round of applause. Now, the two lines aren't parallel, but if I can find a value of x that'll make the 3x plus 5 part be 65, then I can use the corresponding angles converse to say those two lines are parallel. So that's all we need to do is just take those two lines, or those two pieces, and set them equal to one another. So 3x plus 5 equals 65. Using a subtraction property of equality, I get 3x equals 60. Dividing both sides by 3, I end up with x equals 20. So I define the value of x that makes m parallel to n, and that value would be 20. Now, I think you can do this one on your own, because again, where these two angles are located, these are corresponding angles. But something slightly different in our diagram. Here, I already know that the lines are parallel. So I'm going to use the corresponding angles postulate to go ahead and find the value of x. Go ahead and try this one on your own by hitting pause and come back and see if you got it correct. Hopefully you have an equation set up and you correctly found the value of x to be 165. If you did that correctly, give yourself a pat on the back. You rock. Now in example 5 we're going to have a very similar situation where we've got to find a value of y in this case that's going to make a parallel to b. By now, I think you guys probably get the hang of this, so go ahead and hit pause and try and find the value of y for this one on your own. But you got to remember, what, that, what type of angles are 5y plus 6 and 121? If you said alternate exterior angles, you were correct. So give yourself another round of applause, because you rock even more than you just did. How did you do? Did you set up the equation correctly? Did you come up with y equals 23? All right, I'm glad you did. If you didn't, go back and make sure that you've got each step shown exactly as I have. Because remember, you want to make sure that you correctly write an equation and show your work how you come up with the value for y. Now we've got two more examples here. For example 6, we've got an a and a b. Can we prove that the lines a and b are parallel? Explain why or why not. So let's take a look at example a. Now notice where those marks are are on our two lines. Hmm, so I had to think about this. Where that mark is on the left side and the other mark is on the right side, what kind of angles are they? By golly, those are alternate exterior angles. And what do I know about alternate exterior angles? In this diagram, they're marked to be congruent. So, it, line A is going to be parallel to line B by the alternate exterior angles converse. 
not the alternate exterior angle's theorem, so be really careful about that. It's the alternate exterior angle's converse. Now let's take a look at example B. Hmm, look where those two angles are marked that are the same in example B. Now those two angles, they're corresponding angles. And what do I know about corresponding angles? If they're congruent, then I can prove that the lines are parallel. But why? What's that reason? Oh, that's right. Line A is going to be parallel to line B by the corresponding angles converse. So that's going to be if, for example, 6. Hopefully you got both of those correct. Now we've got one last thing to do to just kind of tie everything up here together. When we take a look at all of these pieces, the corresponding angles postulate and the corresponding angles converse, the alternate interior angles theorem, the alternate interior angles converse, each one of those pairs have something in common. Everything on the left hand side, we know that those are lines are parallel already. Whereas everything on the right hand side, we don't know that the lines are parallel at all. One other thing that we know, everything on the left hand side, whether it's the consecutive interior angles theorem or the alternate exterior angles theorem or the alternate interior angles theorem or the corresponding angles postulate, all of those we know that because the lines are parallel, we can set up certain equations and we know things about the angles. Whereas everything on the right hand side, for all that, we're going to use various things about the angle relationship to prove that the two lines were more than two lines. We're going to use all those different angle relationships to help us prove that the lines are parallel. So that's the end of section 3.3. That's a lot of stuff here in our notes for today, so hopefully you got all of that down. All right, I look forward to seeing you guys in class, and make it a great day.